Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Would you state your first and last name uh, for the court reporter? Would you spell the name, your last name? Alan Hamilton, H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N. Mr. Hamilton, uh, what city do you live in? Bushnell. Are you retired? Yes, sir. Retired from the Sumter County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. What year did you retire? 2019. Now, in 2000, I'm sorry, on January 13th, 2014, uh, were you a sworn deputy with the Sumter County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Uh, a certified law enforcement officer? Yes, sir. And pursuant to that certification and authorization through the Sumter County Sheriff's Office, uh, you were assigned a firearm? Yes, sir. And allowed to carry the firearm? Yes, sir. Not only on duty, but off duty? Yes, sir. Okay. On January 13, 2014, did you and your wife have an occasion to go to the Cobb Theater at 6333 Wesley Grove Boulevard in Wesley Chapel, Florida? Yes, sir. Okay. And what is your wife's name, first name? Angela. Angela? Yes, sir. Was that something that was planned or spur of the moment? Spur of the moment. Uh, did you arrive there in the afternoon? Yes, sir. While driving there or before you got there, did you decide what movie you wanted to see? Once we got there, we decided what we wanted you to see. You looked at the choices? Yes, sir. And made a choice? Yes, sir. Made what a choice. choice was that? Um, boy, lost my... Um, well, I won't say the name, but was Mark Wahlberg in it? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> wow. I just lost my train of thought. All right. Um, did you see a movie that day? Yes, sir. Was it uh, a military kind of movie? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor, yeah. I was just going to move on. No, I wasn't trying to. <laughs> I just lost my train. Yeah, we're going to. Sorry about that. And did you go into a movie theater that had a cine uh, cinema bistro in it? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> and do you recall that as being theater 10? Yes, sir. Uh, what I'd like to do is, after you purchased your tickets, uh, did you buy anything at the concession? Yes, sir. After you um, went through the lobby, went through the concession, made your way to theater 10, you go up the ramp, I'm going to take you to that point, then we're going to discuss where you went, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So we're in there and we're up the ramp and we go in and now we have the theater with the screen and the bistro, correct? correct? Yes, sir. Okay. As you come in, tell us what the lighting conditions were when you came in. You could still see, but are low. They were low? Yes, sir. All right. Could you see other patrons had already uh, taken their seats? Yes, sir. Uh, could you see the aisles to walk down? Yes, sir. When you walked in, was there anything playing on the movie screen? Um, not that I recall. Okay. If it was, it would have been uh, commercials. Commercials to make you hungry to go eat, something right. like that? Correct. Okay. Uh, any type of music playing along with those? No, sir. Okay. When you came in and you looked around, did you and your wife make a choice where you wanted to go? Yes, sir. And do you have a particular area when you go to the movies that you would like to sit in? Yes, sir. Where is that? Higher ground. <laughs> Higher ground? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, in the middle or close to an aisle? Close to an aisle. Okay. <clears throat> Did you, in fact, have an opportunity and were those types of seats that you'd like to sit in available when you entered? Yes, sir. All right. Now, as you walk in, and if you'll pretend this is the movie screen and this is the bistro. Okay. All right. So as I turn my back, and then now I'm looking where the bistro is, right. did you sit on my right or my left? If I'm looking at the, it would have been your right. Okay. Yes, sir. So you walked up the aisles that would be on that side of the theater? Yes, sir. Uh, did you go all the way up to the top, to the middle? Where did you go? To the top. Uh, <clears throat> at the bistro, is there a partition there that won't allow the general seating to go into the bistro? Yes, sir. 
can you tell us was your the seat that you took up against that partition or below that? It was up against the partition. As far as the location of your seat, to, uh, was it one next to the aisle or in? It was one in. One in? Yes, sir. Right. Now, if we're one in, if uh, this is the, uh, the aisle right here, okay? One in, are, are you the next one in or is your wife the next one in? Um, I, I would be the next one in and then my wife. Oh. <clears throat> Now, while you were sitting there, we're going to talk about once you took your seats. Once you took your seats with the lighting uh, from uh, the house lights, if you will, which you said were low, along with whatever ambient light comes into the theater from what's up on the screen, could you see other people coming in? Yes, sir. Could you determine whether or not they were male or female? Yes, sir. Could you tell uh, at a certain distance whether or not their hair was long or short? Yes, sir. The people that were already seated when you walked in under those lighting conditions, could you see movement of the people uh, like uh, an arm movement eating snacks or turning uh, their bodies? Could you see that kind of movement? Yes, sir. Did you have an occasion to speak with your wife once you sat down within the first two or three minutes? Yes, sir. Were you able to carry on a normal level conversation, maybe not as loud as I'm talking right now, but a normal conversation with your wife uh, that you two could hear each other? Yes, sir. Okay. When you came in, there was commercials. Uh, there comes a point in time when previews come on. Here's what's happening next for at that point, when those previews come on, did you notice a change in the lighting, the house lights? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> did they go up or down from when you first came in? They went down. All right. Now, the English language is, is what we have. Pretty means a lot to different people. You know, pretty is, is what you think it is. That's just an example. So when we try to describe the lighting, as to uh, dark, dim, pretty dark, whatever you can see. So let's not do that. Let's just talk about what you could see, okay. all right? Yes, sir. Because it doesn't matter. Just what can you see? So when those lights change, whatever the level you want to describe it, let's talk about what you could see. Yes, sir. All right. When those lights change to that different level, could you still see your wife next to you? Yes, sir. Could you see people seated in their seats two or three, four rows in front of you? Yes, sir. Could you see people walking in from the little hallway that's there when you first come in? Could you see people walking down in front of the screen? Yes, sir. Could you see people walking up the aisles? Yes, sir. When you saw the people seated in their seat, could you uh, see movements from at least their shoulders, arm movements, head movements, turn? Maybe yes, not what their legs were doing, but right. you could yes, still sir. see that. Yes, sir. When you look to your right, uh, could you see people to your right beyond where your wife was seated? Yes, sir. All right. Could you see the individuals all the way down to the other aisle? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Let's talk about the level of sound. All right. Again, when we when people try to describe things, pretty loud, some loud, some yelling. You know the words. Let's talk about what you could hear. Okay. Whatever level was, this is what you could hear. Okay. okay? Yes, sir. All right. So let's talk about that. Whatever the change in level of sound was, my question to you is, could you and your wife carry on a normal conversation between the two of you? Yes, sir. Um, were you able to hear words being spoken or actually know what the words were being said two, three rows in front of you from the other people in front? Could you hear them? I can hear them. I okay. can hear the you could hear people talking? Talking. All right. Were you able to pick up and understand exactly the entire topic of the conversation? No, sir. But you know that words were being spoken? Yes, sir. All right. During this event, did you later 
learned that Mr. and Mrs. Olson uh, were shot in the theater. Yes, sir. Later. Did you later learn uh, the gentleman sitting behind them and his wife was Mr. Mm -hmm. and Mrs. Reeves? Yes, sir. I'm going to refer to from now on as those individuals. You know where they were in relation to the theater? Yes, sir. All right, so that's what we're going to do. When you first came into the theater and sat down, did you see Mr. and Mrs. Reeves sitting in the same row that you were? No, sir. Did you see them walk into the theater and take their seat? No, sir. The same questions about Mr. and Mrs. Olson. Once you sat down, did you see Mr. and Mrs. Olson seated, if you recall? No, sir. All right. Did you see them walk in? No, sir. All right. Were you watching the commercials? Yes, sir. Watching the previews? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Prior to January 13th of 2014, had you ever met Mr. and Mrs. Olson? No, sir. Had you ever met Mr. and Mrs. Reeves? No, sir. I want to take to you, direct your attention now to the vent that we're here about, okay? okay. So let me start where you had that snapshot of what took place. Yes, sir. All right. Now, you were watching the previews. Yes, occasionally, sir. would you look around? Yes, sir. And occasionally, you look back? Yes, sir. So that's what I mean by a snapshot. You, you, your vision is not like an eagle where you take everything, right? Yes, sir. All right. So, but, but you were looking around. Yeah. And what? I'm going I'm to object again. I've been meaning, but he's, he's testifying. <laughs> uh, it's leading, it's improper, and direct. I, <clears throat> okay. All right. Do you have eyes like an eagle? No, sir. Can you see with 20-20 vision out to your peripheral? No, sir. In order to do that, do you have to look around? Yes, sir. All right. There we go. While the previews are playing, at some point your attention is drawn to an event. How is your attention drawn to that event? Um, my wife said you probably need to pay attention to this. Once you heard those words, what did you do? I sat up in my seat. Okay, when you said, say, sat up, what does that mean to you? I moved basically my entire body and still sitting towards the front of the seat. So you scooted, was I scooted forward, yes, sir. Okay. Was when you're sitting in your seat, was that your attention directed to your right or to your left? To my right. Was it directed towards the area where you now know that Mr. and Mrs. Reeves were and Mr. and Mrs. Olson were? Yes, sir. Once you made directed your attention to that area, did you take your eyes off that area? No, sir. When you looked, in that area, we're going to go step by step. First look, what did you see? Um, I seen Mr. Olson propped up on a chair mm -hmm. um, in the row, which would have been in front of, of us, but further down to my right again. May the witness step down. Mm -hmm. We do that. So when you step in, we, we talk about, you know, what words mean. Yes, let's get a visual. All right, let me do this. <coughs> you have to speak from here? Yes. Um, when you saw uh, Mr. Olson, could you see his feet on the floor? No, sir. From what part of his body up could you see? About the waist up. All right. So we're not, where his feet were, you have no idea. No, sir. The only thing we're going to talk about waist up. Correct. You mentioned, and let's pretend that this is a theater seat, and that this seat does, you know, when you stand up, it does flip up. I know it's not. Okay? But what I'd like you to do, so this isn't in the way, just pretend the seat's right here. Okay. All right? So go ahead and face the jury. Um, now, you would be over here looking this way, right? 
Yes, sir. All right. You indicated that you saw uh, Mr. Olson propped up. Yes, sir. If you can, demonstrate what, uh, for the jury what you mean by propped up. He was propped. All right. <clears throat> From that position, what did you see? What did you see happen next? He's propped. What, happened? what did you see um, next? I see him flick a popcorn, and within just a second, I see a muzzle blast and the sound of a firearm. <clears throat> While in that position, uh, did you see the arm of Mr. Olson? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, when you say you say a flick, what do you mean by that? Just a, a quick, quick movement of the hand. All right. Before you saw that flick of popcorn, was anything said by Mr. Olson? Yes, sir. What? Um, I was just texting my fucking daughter. Okay. <clears throat> and how soon after that statement was the, quote, flick of popcorn? Within just seconds, sir. I mean, almost simultaneous. Just within seconds. One big ball of an event. Yes, sir. Was it continuous or just flowed? It just flowed. Okay. Just now, flowed. once the you saw the popcorn, what happened next? Um, obviously, I seen the muzzle blast and then the sound of a firearm. Um, and then I moved okay. down that way towards. Right, towards go ahead and take your seat. <clears throat> we'll cover it from there. <clears throat> We're at the point where you make your observation. So let me ask these questions. Tell the jury what you saw. You heard and attributed to Mr. Olson the use of the F word yes, sir. in one sentence. My question to you is at the time that your attention was drawn to Mr. Olson, did you ever hear him use the F word in any other string of sentence at all? No, sir. One time? Just the one time. Can you characterize us, characterize the best you can the space and time between the utterance of that statement and you seeing the debris of popcorn? Just a second or so, just a couple seconds. And can you characterize in the space of time the best you can the time between you see the debris of uh, popcorn and the muzzle flash? Again, just a couple seconds. As you're focused on that event, and you see what you just described, do you ever see you ever see Mr. Olson standing in the seat of his chair? No, sir. Do you ever see him trying to climb over his <coughs> chair towards Mr. Reeves? No, sir. During that time span, did you hear any words at the same level where he said, I'm just texting my daughter, where you would associate those words with a threat of violence? No, sir. No F-bombs thrown in about doing bodily harm to Mr. Reeves? No, sir. Did you see anything before you saw the debris of popcorn that would indicate to you that any object whatsoever was thrown at Mr. Reeves? No, sir. Did you see any indication from Mr. Reeves that he was hit with such gravity that his hands would come up and he would scream with pain? No, sir. Anything to indicate by Mr. Reeves' body movement that he suffered any type of uh, strike about his body where uh, you, you would expect someone to react to the pain? No, sir.
when you looked over, we just talked about what you did say, but when you looked over, when you first looked over, was there anything about that situation that you thought you needed to intervene at that point? Yes, sir. Okay, what? Other than the firing of the gun. Right. All right. I'm not talking about that. Before the flick of the popcorn. Before the flick of the popcorn? Mm -hmm. No, sir. We have the shot fired. What action do you take? What do you do? Um, I stand up, make my way down the aisle, um, over to uh, Mr. Reeves or to that to that area, um, and and I observed uh, Mr. Reeves sitting down and a firearm in his left left knee. Okay. Now you see the firearm. Yes, sir. You know a firearm. You know what a shot sounds like. Yes, sir. All right. Um, and through your law enforcement experience, you have some training as far as firearm safety. Yes, sir. And one of the rules is don't put anything in front of your muzzle you don't want to destroy, object. right? I'm, I'm going to object. It, it's okay. continuous. It, I, I'm trying not to object, but it's... Okay. All right. Would you agree or disagree with me that one of the rules is don't put your hand in front of the muzzle if you don't want to destroy Just it? Just the same objection. You, you no. You say it two different ways the same no. way. No. Rephrase. Thank you. Can you tell us whether or not uh, you have been taught that do not put your hand in front of the muzzle? Yes, sir. All right. And what happens if the gun fires and the, your hand's in front of the muzzle? You're going to get shot in the hand. All right. Now, having said that, while you're watching the event for the very first time, all right, did you ever see Mr. Reeves with his hand out and Mr. Olson chest almost on his hand and Mr. Reeves going, whoa, 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 or no, no, no. No, sir. No. Not at all. When you're walking towards Mr. Reeve after the shooting, um, what are your thoughts as you're walking up knowing that there's a gentleman there, Mr. Reeve, that has a firearm on, on his knees? What are your you? thoughts? On relevancy. As you were walking forward, did you keep your eyes where you perceived the firearm to be? Yes, sir. All right. Why were you doing that? 
just to try to find who was at the other end of that firearm. Tell us whether or not there were any other people um, seated in seats as you walked. Yes, sir. There was, a, there, was a, there was an elderly couple that was seated obviously to my right as I walked that way. And then um, next would have been uh, Mr. Reeves and his wife. Once you got to where Mr. Reeves was, what was your next action? Um, reached down and, um, well, I obviously I observed um, a firearm on his left knee. I reached down and grabbed the firearm. As you walked up to him, uh, were your eyes looking towards him sufficiently so that you could see his entire body? Yes, sir. What, if anything, did you notice about his eyeglasses? They were on his face. Normal or obscured? Normal, yes sir. While you walked up, uh, did you see any body movement with his hands towards his face as he walked up? Yes sir, he, he leaned back and pushed his glasses up above his head. Okay, is that when you to got to it? Sir, yes sir. All right, so let's talk about that. Um, once you got up there, we're going to jump this a little bit out of order, but you said he did that. Um, what did Mr. Reeves say to you uh, when, you, as you demonstrated, he was pushing up his glasses? He said he thought he had something in his eye. Something in his eye. In his eye, yes, sir. And show us again what did he did with his glasses. He pushed his glasses up on his forehead, you know, to be basically, I guess, at my level, to where I could see something in his eye. And did you look in that direction while sure. his glasses were up? Sure, yes, sir. And tell us whether or not visually you were able to see anything. No, sir. Okay. What happened after the glasses were up? Well, okay, did you put them back down? Sure. Okay, thanks. All right. Now let's get back to securing the firearm. Did you, in fact, secure the firearm? Yes, sir. Did you tell Mr. Reeves anything before you retrieved the firearm from his knee? No, sir. All right. Do you know whether or not Mr. Reeves knew at that point you were law enforcement? I identified myself as law enforcement officer, yes, sir. All right. Once you took the firearm, uh, what did you do with it? I placed it in my pocket. Did Mr. Reeves uh, do anything to object to you receiving it? No, sir. At that point, how would you describe his cooperation? Uh, he was cooperative. How long were you with Mr. Reeves until law enforcement responded to the theater? Uh, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. During that time, uh, where was the firearm? It's in my back pocket. Approach, Your Honor. Let me show you what's been marked for identification as Stacy Exhibit Y. Do you recognize the that photograph? Yes, sir. And how do you... What is it? That's a 380 kill tape. Right. And can you tell us whether or not that's the firearm you took off from Mr. Reeves? Yes, sir. Right. Your Honor, at this time I've moved State's Exhibit Y into evidence as State's Exhibit Number 20. Any objection? No objection. May It'll I just be admitted. You may. <clears throat> take this time period, this 20 minutes while law enforcement, several different topics, okay? okay? Topic number one is the location of uh, Mrs. Olson. 
during that time period, were you aware of where she was? Yes, sir. Okay. Where was she? She was just to um, Mr. Olson's right. I'm talking about after the shooting? Um, she was one seat, one or two seats separated from him. Okay. Once you got up there and retrieved the firearm, do you know the location of Mrs. Olson? Mrs. Olson? No, sir. While you're standing there with Mr. Reeves, describe to us the actions of the other patrons in a general fashion. What was occurring right after the shooting as far as the other patrons? Um, some of them left the area. Some were trying to uh, perform CPR on Mr. Olson. From your location of standing there with Mr. Reeves, did that location provide you an opportunity to see Mr. Olson, where he was? No, sir. All right. Could you see the patrons there? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I need to take you back just a little bit. Before okay. you get the firearm, you're walking forward. Do you see Mr. Olson after he shot? Yes, sir. As you walk towards Mr. Reeves, do you hear anything that Mr. Olson says? Yes, sir. What do you hear him say? Can't believe he shot me. Direct your attention now back to Mr. Reeves. As you're waiting for law enforcement and after we did the glasses, okay? While standing there, did the lights come up? Yes, House sir. lights? Yes, sir. Did you notice anything on his face that would indicate to you an injury? No, sir. Did, were you able to see his front of his face? Yes, sir. Did you see the left side of his face? Yes, sir. Anything on, do you see the um, left side, your, your left side? Yes, right. sir. See the top of his head? Yes, sir. Was there any blood on any of those locations? No, sir. Can you tell us whether or not there was any cuts on any of those locations? No, sir. Can you tell us whether or not there was any abrasions in any of those locations? No, sir. House lights are up and you're still with Mr. Reeves. I want to talk about your observations away from Mr. Olson and Mr. Reeves. All right. While standing there, did you have an opportunity to look in the area of where Mr. Reeves' uh, feet were? Yes, sir. Were there, can you tell us whether or not there were any items on the floor? Uh, popcorn and a cell phone. Okay. You recall anything else? No, sir. In that 20 minute period, did you see any movement of Mrs. Reeves? After the shooting, you're standing there waiting for law enforcement. Yes, sir. Um, what, what did she do? Um, she eventually got up and left, but she had moved, moved over um, away from Mr. Reeves. Okay. Law enforcement arrives. Yes, sir. You have a firearm in the pocket. Yes, sir. Tell us what you do. Uh, the first uh, deputy or sergeant that was there came up and I identified myself with him and handed him the firearm and the other two deputies uh, detained Mr. Reeves. Okay. At that point, uh, was your off-duty law enforcement kind of slash civilian duties over with? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Now, you witnessed the incident, so I'm going to assume at that point there was some interviewing by detectives. Yes, sir. Well, let's talk about that part of the event, okay? Okay. <coughs> Did your wife remain in the aisle um, in your general area while uh, you stood by Mr. Reeves? Yes, sir. After those duties were gone, 
uh, did you and your wife leave? Um, the theater? The theater? No, sir. All right. Did there come a point in time when you uh, were given a piece of paper? Yes, sir. What instructions were given to you when uh, an officer gave you that piece of paper? Uh, just make a statement of, of the incident on the statement form. All right. Did you, in fact, do that? Yes, sir. Uh, and did your wife do that? Yes, sir. Were you and your wife together when you individually wrote out your statements? Yes, sir. Tell us whether or not uh, you helped your wife write out her statement. No, sir. Did you provide your wife with any facts that you saw uh, while writing out the statement? No, sir. While your wife wrote out the statement, she was in your presence. Did she provide you with any information that she saw that you incorporated in your statement? No, sir. Did you even talk about the incidents as you were writing out your individual statement? No, sir. Before writing out those statements, uh, were you in the general area of presence, if you will, anywhere in the theater uh, where you overheard other individuals talking? Not that I know, sir. Okay. As you sit here today, is there, do you have any recollection of hearing anyone comment on the incident? No, sir. While still at the theater, after writing out the statements, were you interviewed? Yes, sir. Tell us whether or uh, not you were, both you and your wife were interviewed. Yes, sir. And tell us, uh, were you present when your wife was interviewed? Yes, sir. Why? Uh, she was pretty upset over the whole ordeal. So I basically stayed with her just to kind of keep her calm. Where did the interview take place? Uh, it was in a, uh, like a child's daycare center within the theater. When the interview took place in relation to your wife and the individual taking the interview, what was your location in the room? I was sitting behind her. Okay. Could you hear the questions and answers? Yes, sir. And tell us whether or not at any time you verbally interjected during the interview? No, sir. At any time, tell us whether or not at any time you made any noise, facial expressions, whatever, that would indicate a displeasure as to what your wife was saying? No, sir. Or to indicate that she might be wrong about what she was saying? No, sir. How would you describe your wife's emotional state as she walked into the interview room? Um, she's upset. Um, you know, just kind of in a, you know, in that I can't believe type deal. Okay. Did your interview take place before or after your wife? Mine was before. Okay. Was your wife present during your interview? Yes, sir. Okay. Same situation? Yes, sir. As far as location? Yes, sir. And why was she present during your lo your interview? I just didn't feel the necessity to separate. We were in the room together. Her emotional state was a factor at all? Yes, sir. I want to be with my wife. <coughs> before you completed your written statement or before your interview, did you and your wife discuss individually what each other saw? No, sir. Have a moment, Your Honor.
No further questions. Thank you. Cross? Yeah, you're right. <coughs> Council. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Hamilton. Good afternoon, sir. Now, <coughs> Let me just uh, briefly go uh, through a little bit of your background, Mr. Hamilton. You are retired. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Hamilton, you started your law enforcement career as a, a detention uh, officer. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, sir. And who was that for? CCA. And what is CCA? Uh, I can't remember the CCA uh, Corrections Association. It's a it's a private business. Of uh, corrections uh, uh, of America or something to that Correction, fact? Yeah, yes, sir. Corrections of America or something like that. It's okay. been a long time. And you were you were there for uh, quite a few years. Yes, sir. Uh, and then you went to I guess the Brooksville uh, Police Department. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And you were there for uh, uh, about five years as a road deputy. Yes, sir. And then, it's my understanding, uh, you then went to uh, Sumter. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now. You were in Sumter, I guess, uh, until your retirement. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you, uh, while you were at Sumter, you you changed uh, a little bit in uh, in your positions, correct? Yes, sir. You started as a patrol officer. Yes, sir. At some point, you went to a school resource officer. Yes, sir. You went to a detective. Yes, sir. Uh, you felt like things were overwhelming in the detective division, so you wanted to go back into patrol. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, I think you indicated in direct examination that as a law enforcement officer and with your training, even when you go into a theater, you want to sit at the very, very top, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And it's because you want to obviously not have people behind you. You want to have people in front of you so you can see what's going on. Correct. Yes. That's just part of the life of a police officer, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, um, you were seated at the very back, in the very back there's a wall, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And that wall's what, about six foot tall? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, as a result of that, your seats don't recline as much as the seats in front of you. Mm, I, I don't recall whether how much they recline. I, I was sitting back in mine. So. You're lounging. You're kind of, right? You're, yes, sir. And so is your wife. Correct. And your wife is seated to your right. Yes, sir. And you believe there's about seven to nine seats between you all yes, sir. and Mr. Reeves, correct? Yes, sir. And in between you all and Mr. Reeves, there's at least another couple, maybe two. Just one more couple. One That's more couple. Yes, okay. Sir. And how many, how many seats from your seats would you say that other couple was? Just one or two seats, best I recall. Okay. That was also an older couple, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now... Uh, your position was that the previews were not playing, correct? When you first came in? Well, first came in, no, sir. Okay. And even though the previews weren't playing, you, I think, characterized the lighting as low. Low. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, when the previews came on, however, it became even darker. Yes, sir. And not only that, when the previews came on, or just before they came on, you had this announcement uh, for the patrons like yourself to put your phones away, turn off your phones, right? That's correct. In fact, the theater told you that so many times that you were talking to your wife and thinking, if they tell me one more time, I'm going to pull out my phone. That's correct. And so the theater was making it clear that at least management wanted you to put your phone away. That's correct. Ad nauseum. Yes, sir. And when that announcement comes up, you put your phone away, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and why do you do that? Ask, that's what they want you to do. When you go to the theater, what's your, your reasons for going to the theater? Do you want to have that theater experience? Yes, sir. You want to be able to focus on what's showing on the screen? That's correct. Yes, sir. Uh, and likewise, some people go to the theater because it's nice and loud, right? Yes, sir. It's part of the experience, right? Yes, sir. Certainly a lot louder than what you play 
a movie at your home, right? Yes, sir. When they play, played the previews there at that theater on January the 13th of 2014, the previews were loud. Loud as, I mean... Well, you remember RoboCop, right? That was one of the previews, right? It was action-packed. It was shooting. It was loud. I just remember commercials, and they were they were loud. I mean, enough where you can hear them. Yes, I'm not talking about the commercials. I'm talking about the previews. These are the movies that they intend to show in the future. It right. was RoboCop. It was all those Terminator-type previews that day, correct? Yes, sir. And they were loud. They were loud. And they were shoot 'em up type of previews, were they not? Yes, sir. Both you and your wife are seated. You're paying attention to the previews, right? Yes, sir. You're looking to see what's coming up next that you may want to go see. Yes, sir. And it was your wife that had to nudge you to get your attention, to focus your attention on something else. Yes, sir. And when you did that, when she did that, you scooted up. Correct? Yes, sir. And the first thing that you see is you see a person standing up, correct? Yes, sir. And what you see is really a silhouette, right? That's correct. You don't see my definitions that you see here, right? No, sir. You don't see a clear skin color, color of my eyes, right? No, sir. You don't see the color of my frames, do you? No, sir. All you're seeing at that distance is a silhouette. Yes, sir. You know what a silhouette is? Yes, sir. So you're not able to see features? No, sir. And you can only see from the waist up? Yes, sir. But you could tell that that silhouette was yelling in that theater. At one point, yes, sir. Yelling, right? Right. In fact, you're not only making that statement here yelling. You put that in your own written statement, did you not? Yes, sir. That's correct. And this tall man, right? He was tall. Yes, sir. You said at least over six feet. Yes, sir. This tall man was yelling, and he was leaning over the back of his seat. No, sir, it was propped. You remember making a statement? Yes, sir. And you made that statement on the very day of this incident, correct? That's correct. Yes, sir. You made that statement even before you were interviewed by the detectives. That's correct. And you remember making this statement? I observed a white male standing up to my right and lean over his back seat and begin to yell something to the effect, I am trying to text my fucking daughter. That's correct. Well, when you made the statement, was it correct? Yes, sir. Best of my and you would agree when you made the statement in 2014 that your recollection was much better on the date of this incident than it is in 2022 today. Yes, sir. Did you have a problem with saying that he was over the back of his seat? Is that a problem? Is that, what do you mean in the statement that I had a problem? Can I see your fancy chair? Sitting. Well, I'm sitting on it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> When you came, when the prosecutor was here, this is what you told the jury that you called propped up. Is yes. that what you call propped up? Yes, or was he leaning as your statement, leaning over the back of his seat? He was not leaning over the back of the seat. 
Not lean, <clears throat> even though that's what you put <clears throat> in your statement. Yes, sir. You're correct. You're, you must have been lying then when you made that I statement. I object to that characterization. Approach. So, was it propped up? Yes, sir. Or was it leaning over the chair as you've indicated on January the 13th? He was propped up. So he wasn't leaning over the... That yes, was just something that you wrote that was incorrect on January the 13th of 2014? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, yes, sir. And you're a police officer, correct? Yes, sir. And by that time you were a police officer for how long? 15, 16 years. And you must have been trained that when you're writing a statement, you've got that, write that statement precisely and accurately, correct? Yes, sir. Because in our system of justice, we can't afford to make mistakes, can we? No, sir. Especially police officers, correct? Yes, sir. The one thing is that you did not hear Mr. Reeves say a peep, correct? That's correct. In fact, you couldn't even see Mr. Reeves. No, sir. Is that correct? That's correct. Because it was dark, correct? It was low lighting. Is low lighting the equivalent of dark? No, sir. It's not? No, sir. Well, why couldn't you see Mr. Reeves if it was just low lighting? The prosecutor came over here and said, well, could you see this person? Could you see this person? And you, but you couldn't see Mr. Reeves? No, sir. And you could only see a silhouette of Mr. Olson. May I ask a question? No, uh, you can answer the question. Okay. You could only see uh, yes, sir. the silhouette. Yes, sir. Because it was dark. That's correct. No, it was low lighting. <clears throat> When you heard Mr. Olson, you wanted to find out, quote, who was raising hell. Yes. Correct? Yes, sir. That's what was in your mind at that point in time. Yes, sir. You wanted to find out who was raising hell. Correct? Yes, sir. And the only one that you heard that was raising hell was that silhouette. Yes, sir. You don't know how long that silhouette, Mr. Olson, was raising hell, correct? That's correct. Because you were focused on the previews, correct? Yes, sir. Because your wife had to be the one to nudge you to say, hey, you need to pay some attention here. Yes, sir. You did not see the entire exchange that took place from Mr. Olson towards Mr. Reeves. Not the entire, no, sir. And you had no idea, therefore, if Mr. Olson had come over that chair on a previous few seconds, correct? No, sir. Because you were looking over there, correct? No. Correct. And so you don't know what was happening at that moment before you looked over there. Correct.
What you do know is that Mr. Olson was raising hell and using the F word. Correct? Using or well, used? Maybe I should say saying the F word. Do you want me to say it? Uh, he said the F word. Okay. And certainly that alarmed you because to hear that yelling with the F word in a theater is totally out of character, right? Correct. Yes, sir. You would never in your entire life expect someone to be getting up in the middle of a theater and using that word, yelling, right? Yes, sir. And it alarmed you seven to nine seats away. Yes, sir. You were doing your best to try to see what you could see, but all you could see was a silhouette and could not even see Mr. Reeves. No, sir. But you know that that silhouette was facing in one direction and one direction when it was raising hell, right? Yes, sir. And it was facing at Curtis Reeves. Yes, sir. And it was in very close proximity to Curtis Reeves. Yes, sir. And it was tall. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you certainly never saw Mr. Olson or the silhouette with a phone in his hand, did you? Excuse me? I'm sorry. You okay. never saw the silhouette with a phone in his hand, right? No, sir. All you're seeing is a silhouette, right? No, no phone. sir. But you say that, I guess you called it a flick of bob popcorn. Yes. Now, Tell me if you were only able to see a silhouette, how could you see someone flicking? It was just an arm, a hand, and then it was a flip. So, meaning an arm and a hand towards Mr. Reeves? It was just out over where the silhouette was standing in a flick. So that hand went from the silhouette out towards Mr. Reeves? Correct. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. In very close proximity? Yes, sir. And it was then almost instantaneously you heard the shot. Yes, sir. In fact, you wouldn't be surprised if it's less than a full second. Within a couple seconds, yes, sir. Well, you didn't. You're, no, you're I didn't. Estimating, right? And well, my question is, you wouldn't be surprised if it was less than a second. No, sir. You didn't see the gun because it was dark. Correct. And so this is a good one. You couldn't see Mr. Olson. You couldn't see the gun. No, sir. But you saw popcorn? I see. Yes, sir. How could you see popcorn if you can't see anything than a silhouette of Mr. Olson and you can't see a gun and you can't see Mr. Reeves? How, how are you able to see a popcorn? Tough one, huh? No, it's not tough. It's just, that's what it was. That's what it was. Now, you gave us a statement on direct examination where you indicated that the shot took place and Mr. Olson fell to the ground? No, sir. He didn't fall to the ground? No, sir. Okay. So, shot took place. What did Mr. Olson do? Um, he held his hands over his chest Okay. and said, I can't believe he shot me. Okay. 
and that, that quickly. Shot, I can't believe he shot me, and then what happens? Um, he kind of went towards the, the north side or away from me of the building, down that, that same road he was on. Okay, and? Uh, eventually, I, I guess he, he fell. You didn't see him fall? No. Okay, and so you saw all that from your vantage point of where you were. Yes. Meaning seven to eight, nine seats from the incident. Because it shot Mr. Olson, statement, right? So yes. you're, you're still at your seat, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. And so can you tell me how long it took you to get from your position at your seat to Mr. Reeves <clears throat> after that took place? Thirty seconds. Okay. I wasn't timing it up. You never saw Mrs. Olson. No, sir. At all. I seen her at the very end. Well, at the very end of what? After the shot? After they turned the, the lights up and people were. But before they turned the lights on, you didn't even see Mrs. Olson. No, sir. Because it was dark. Yes, sir. No, it was low lighting. But somehow you said on direct examination that she was seated to the right of Mr. Olson? Mrs. Olson? Did she you say that on, on direct? Remember, in direct? When they're asking you where Mrs. Olson was, you said, well, he was seated, she was seated to the right of Mr. Olson. I don't remember that. You're talking about today? What's that? You're talking about today? No. <laughs> We're talking about the incident. On the date of the incident, was Mrs. Olson seated to the right of Mr. Olson? I don't know. Because you didn't see her? No, sir. I didn't see her. Now, you get to Mr. Reeves. You're a trained law enforcement officer, right? Yes, sir. In a situation where you just had a shooting, uh, certainly you don't want to have a firearm exposed to the general public, correct? Correct. Because they're going to think that you're a threat, right? Yes, sir. You've been trained on that in your own law enforcement career, right? Yes, sir. So you didn't find it odd whatsoever that Mr. Reeves, immediately after the shot, put the gun on his, on his lap. You weren't surprised by that. Mm, yes, sir, I was. Why would you be surprised by him putting it on his neck, uh, on his on his lap, when he didn't want to expose everybody to think that he was someone that was dangerous. He certainly didn't want him to have a gun in his hand after the shot, yeah, right? I'm going to object to counsel testifying. Oh, it's it's, it is cross. <laughs> it's, not, it's not proper cross. I'll ever go. Right? You do not want. You've been trained in law enforcement. Hey, listen. If there's a situation with a big crowd especially if you're not in a police uniform, you don't want to have a gun in your hand thinking, everybody thinking that you're a threat, right? That's correct. And so when you went over to Mr. Reeves, I'm sure you thought to yourself, oh, highly trained individual, he puts the gun you right on his head. I object to that. It's totally speculation. Facts not in evidence. He's it's cross, I, Your Honor. I, I, I can ask him that question. Cross, but it's improper cross. No. Overruled. Right? He went over there and said, ah, yeah, put that gun right there. In fact, if, is that correct? Highly trained individual, put it there. Nobody sees him with a gun in his hand. I didn't know that he was highly trained. No, at that point you didn't, but you must have thought that. Why would you put it on his knee? No, sir, I didn't think that at all. You didn't think that. But I can tell you that when you picked up that gun from his knee, you quickly hit it, right? That's correct. Because you didn't want everybody in that particular theater to think that you were a threat. That's correct. Because you were not in a police uniform. That's correct. And what happens is, if they think you're a threat and somebody's got a gun, now he starts shooting at you and these poor individuals on, in the theater may get shot. That's correct. You wanted that gun out of sight for the right reasons, right? Yes, sir. 
You didn't want anybody misconstruing you to be an aggressor. That's correct. Now, when you when you went over to Mr. Reeves, pretty close after the shot, and you look down, can I borrow your chair? Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Morton. I should have brought my own chair. Mr. Reeves is still seated. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> and right between his legs, you're here. Right? Standing up. Yes, sir. And you look down, and right between his legs, you see a phone. Yes, sir. You being a law enforcement officer, knowing that that could be a piece of evidence, <clears throat> right? Yes, sir. You make sure that when Mr. Reese is finally cuffed, that you tell the officers, hey, by the way, there's a phone here that you need to pay attention to. Correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. You told Mr. Reeves that you were a law enforcement officer when you approached him. Yes, sir. He told you, likewise, that he was a retired law enforcement officer. Yes, sir. You didn't have to wrestle Mr. Reeves. No, sir. He was very cooperative. Yes, correct? sir. Correct? Yes, sir. And he told you that there was something, someone had hit him, right? Yes, sir. Objection hearsay, Your Honor. talking about something that Mr. Reeves said about something about his eye, but he also told you before he did that that he was hit. He said something that hit his, was in his eye. Did he say that he was hit? He was hit with something. Okay. That he was hit with something. And uh, at the time that he told you that was right when you approached him. Yes, sir. And the lighting was still at that point that it was dark. It was low lighting. It wasn't dark. Low lighting. And you didn't have a flashlight with you? No, sir. And you weren't going to be looking for any redness on his face. You were looking for, oh, is he bleeding? Is he, does he have a gash, right? Yes, sir. 
You weren't looking for anything that had any other indicia of injury. Mr. Court. Yes, sir. In fact, you didn't even get real close to him, did you? No, sir. <clears throat> In fact, you remember Mr. Reeves' son, Matthew Reeves. Yes, sir. Coming up. Yes, sir. And him identifying himself also as a police officer. That's correct. Correct? Yes, sir. And you remember him having blood all over his hands because he was the one that was attending to Mr. Olson, correct? That's correct. And you didn't want to talk to him either? No, sir. Now, we had some testimony concerning interviews, right? <clears throat> yes, sir. And you've been trained, obviously, <clears throat> in your career that when they, they give you a voluntary statement form, you're not telling this jury that some police officer had to come over and tell you how to fill it out. No, sir. You know how to fill it out, right? Yes, sir. You're going to put in as much detail as you possibly can. Preliminary. Yes, sir. And the information that you're going to put in this document, you're going to make sure that it is true. Yes, sir. Right? Because yes, you're going to be placed under oath at some point in time, right? Yes, sir. So it's not a document to fool around with. No, sir. And so, early in your career, very early in your career, probably your academy, you were taught about something called contamination, right? Yes, sir. Witness contamination. Yes, sir. And that is a ba very basic investigative tool, right? Yes, sir. That you're not supposed to allow witnesses to come into contact with each other, correct? That's correct. That's very dangerous, you would agree? Yes, sir. It's very dangerous in our, in our system of criminal justice, right? Yes, sir. Because people hear things, and whether it's right or wrong, they start adopting it for themselves, right? Yes, sir. And then you don't really get to know whether the witness's testimony is their own or 15 other people that they heard that statement from. That's correct. And so you've been trained as early as the academy separate these witnesses. Yes, sir. And you were there in that theater and it, just the opposite happened, correct? You were yes. a congregating group right in that theater, correct? I can't speak for everybody else, but I was with my wife, yes, sir. Well, you were with your wife and there was a group of people around you. Yes, sir. And not a single police officer came up to you and said, Mr. Hamilton, let's make sure we got to separate you all please don't talk to anybody about your testimony, right? That's correct. And you didn't hear that police officer tell anybody in that group, 30, 40, 50 people, whatever they were. You didn't tell, you didn't see any police officer come up and say, hey group, separate, do not talk about your testimony with anybody else. No, sir. And you certainly know that there was a battalion of Pasco County Sheriff's officers all over the Grove Theater. I don't know about a battalion, but there were several in there, yes, sir. Many, right? Many, Many. yes, sir. And knowing that, you as a police officer, you get interviewed by Detective Proctor, the lead detective in this case, right? Yes, sir. And he interviews you with your wife there, and he interviews your wife with you there, right? Yes, sir. And let's take it one step further. Before he even turns on the tape, you all have a little discussion, right? Off tape. I, I don't recall a discussion off tape. Well, you certainly don't think that would be appropriate, right? To have a discussion with both of us there? Off tape. If, according to what we're discussing. Well, the case. I don't recall that, that discussion. If it happened, that would be improper. Yes, sir. Highly improper, right? Be improper. You would have never done it in your career as a law enforcement officer. No, sir. There is no reason whatsoever to have a conversation about the case when you have a tape recorder present without turning that tape recorder off. That's correct.
when you went uh, into that interview room, you wanted to tell Detective Proctor what you knew. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. That was your purpose. Yes, sir. Homicide case, right? Yes, sir. You expect thorough interviews in a homicide case, right? Yes, sir. How long have we been? Have you been on the stand? You think we came in at one o'clock? Mm, a little after, yes, sir. It's two twenty-seven, right? Yes, sir. I've been up here asking you a lot of questions, haven't I? Yes, sir. Your interview with Detective Proctor was five minutes. You think that's a thorough interview in a homicide investigation? No, sir. You certainly wouldn't have done that, right? And you were never a homicide investigator. You would have never done that in a homicide case, would you? No, sir. Because our system of justice requires thoroughness, correct? Yes, sir. thing that you know is that when you went up to Mr. Reeves, took the gun from him, he was concerned for Mr. Olson. Yes, sir. I have no further questions. <laughs>